Several studies by the National Alliance on Mental Illness show one in six kids between the ages of 6 and 17 experience a mental health disorder each year in the U.S. The organization created the Ending the Silence, which is a free presentation to help teach middle school and high school students about the issues of mental health. Joining us now is Letitia Lebrecht, Executive Director, and Corinne Cook, Ending the Silence presenter. Thank you both for being here. Great to have you Thank you, you here. for having us. So, Letitia, let's just talk about what Ending the Silence is. Certainly. So, Ending the Silence is a targeted program that's going to reach middle school and high school students. And so, it's an opportunity to bring mental health services into the schools where these youth and adolescents spend the majority of their time. So it's an opportunity for teachers to learn about the warning signs of mental health and mental illness and maybe things that are not your typical teenage or youth behavior that they can start tracking. And so we kind of build in that knowledge base so that the teachers and the school staff are aware of it. Seems like a wonderful idea. Was it a long time in development and was there resistance to it? You know, um, for the most part, schools are very, very thankful for the information. We're kind of giving them an additional tool for them to utilize. It's certainly not going to conquer all of our mental health problems. I wish that it would. But it really does bring them an extra set of resources that they can rely on and then they can refer out if there needs to be more in-depth counseling. Okay. Um, there have been a few occurrences where there is the old myth that if you talk about depression, you talk about anxiety, you talk about suicide, you're going to create it. And we know that that's not true. And so we have to get over that barrier. And once we do, the schools are very, very open to the concept. So Corinne, what's it like being a presenter? Oh, I absolutely love it. Getting to connect with the youth who I really think is our future is so important to me. I wish I would have had these same services and programs available, made readily available to me when I was a student in junior high and high school. So how much training went into this? And is it, you know, I'm not going to say a, a, a form that you exactly have to follow, although I presume there are very close standards. Can you make it your own in any way? Absolutely. You kind of are given a set list of topics that you would kind of cover, and that is what we go over during the training process. So the training is a one-day training. It is eight hours long. We go over what we call our story, and there's kind of a beginning of just a little bit of background about you, a middle of kind of what looks like your journey, and then the last part is uh, focused on hope. Okay. Letitia, is it a combination of in-person and remote? Does it does it factor in what the audience is? Yeah, we try to do pretty much everything in person. And, you know, that's kind of how NAMI was built, that connection person to person. But we all went through the same thing with the pandemic. And so we all had to learn how to deliver our services in a different way. So we started to do things virtually. And now it's just a, it's a hybrid model. We do both. So if somebody is maybe in a geographical area that doesn't is not conducive to internet then we you know we try to hook them up with that or we try to go down to where they are so it's a nice combination of both now I'm gonna use a media term to some extent uh -oh. are they all live or are there are they pre-recorded in some ways for the audience so some of the segments can actually be pre-recorded some of the personal stories that we will have but for the most part the actual training and the actual function is a live event what does that feel like to be in a live setting like that because it it's so personal I imagine it gets somewhat emotional as well. What, what is that like to be in, in front of an audience like that? I actually find it to be completely inspiring, to be honest. I am such a firm believer that when we speak about it, we give it room to breathe. That no longer has to remain trapped within us. And then other people can really see themselves in me, in their struggles and in my own struggles. So in some cases, we're talking about people 6 through 17. That can be difficult for the younger, I imagine, to, to in fact hear about these things initially. Um, but at the same time, can I ask what kind of reaction you're getting? And are you getting reaction from the youngest of the young, even if it's anonymous? Sure. We are getting a lot of reaction. And the, the, what we're hearing is that finally somebody is normalizing this and not making so it's so stigmatized. And it's okay to talk about these difficult things. And it makes it possible to then talk to others about it. And so it's really this opening up of a dialogue and communication that is the most crucial piece of this program. I'd like to talk a little bit more about that because mm -hmm. it does seem like this is, has been a specter for a long time, which is sort of hard to understand in the sense that, uh, you know, all of us have doubts and fears on a daily basis. So sure. it seems like it would be better if it's out in the sunlight. Absolutely. And what we're taking is what we consider kind of normal adolescent youth behavior. But when it goes on for a longer amount of time and the severity is increased, then we're looking at a pattern. We're looking at a pattern of a mental health issue. And that's the distinguishing factor is like, let's talk about when things are not the normal pattern anymore. And what do you need to do next? And so we're just kind of busting open that communication. Yeah. Corinne, any stories you could share from groups you've spoken to? 
Absolutely. So I've been able to do now in my time as an Ending the Silence presenter over 100 presentations. So I've been doing this for a long amount of time. I always have individuals come up to me afterwards that for the first time feel seen, feel heard, mm -hmm. feel understood. They confide in me. They share some of their deepest, darkest um, secrets with me because, again, that dialogue has been open and they feel comfortable and safe with me because I set the stage by sharing my stuff and being vulnerable first, right? Yeah. So, Letitia, we've got about 30 seconds okay. left. So a big question going forward. Can this program be expanded? Is that already in the works? It is in the works, and I, I'm very proud to say that Arizona's kind of taken that stand, and we're doing a statewide approach to this program. It's not siloed with community and community. We share resources amongst the state. We've reached over 6,000 students at this point, and we are just growing, and we have requests from all over the state to continue and expand, yeah. so this is great. Best of luck to you both. Thank Patricia. you so much. Thanks so much for being Thank here. You for Appreciate us. it.